it sounds like the plot of a science fiction movie. A Russian weapon system. Military strategists are trying to get inside Vladimir Putin's head. Seems to have a secret arms supplier. Warfare has received game-changing AI weapons. We are talking about weapons that can identify humans from any direction and have autonomous ability to kill as instructed. A world full of killer robots is what we're looking at right now, and the first to officially launch these autonomous weapons is Russia. Buckle up, because nothing will prepare you for the ability of these killing machines. Vladimir Putin and Russia have done it again. They have succeeded in throwing the world into a fresh wave of unease with these machines that have just been launched. Mind you, they are not the only ones who have been researching autonomous weapons. Countries like the USA, China, and North Korea have reportedly been loading tons of money into the research of these weapons. It is just crazy that Russia has managed to hack and perfect the skill so fast. Since the launch of the Russian robot army, we can all feel the change in power balance around the world. The use of autonomous weapons in the Russian-Ukraine war became widespread news when it was revealed that Moscow and Kiev were using the weapons to aim at enemy soldiers and buildings. This caused many people to talk and experts around the world engaged in constant debates over it. Many have debated about the risks, benefits, and potential precautions should these robots become a threat to humanity. If drones are capable of causing that much damage, we can only imagine the level of destruction if Russia's new robot army goes to war. There have been speculations that these robots can win wars without any human casualties. On their side, that is. But it will spell bad luck for the enemy. That sounds like sci-fi, right? Well, it's not. The name of this first robot is Fedor, and is a humanoid robot that was initially designed for space exploration. They found out that Fedor is capable of so much more, and began to test out more features. The experts in charge found out that Fedor can replicate the movements of the remote operator, as well as doing them on his own. Fedor can shoot with both hands, and the moment this feature was revealed, foreign companies that supplied Russia with parts and equipment ceased to do so. The developers then began to use in-country sensors, cameras, parts, among others. The development of Fedor began in 2014 and was first revealed in 2016. Since then, it can open doors, operate a fire extinguisher, and hold a saw. Fedor is also capable of driving a car and crawling on all fours. It didn't take long before Fedor evolved and is now capable of performing splits, longitudinal, and traverse. He set a world record for the first robot to do splits. Fedor stands at 183 centimeters and weighs 136 kilograms, and this makes him a force that can be utilized in many military situations. Fedor is not the only one out today as a new contender emerged at the arms exhibition in Moscow. The robot dog M81, which was developed by Intellect Machine, is built to carry a grenade launcher and is capable of shooting with deadly accuracy. It is also useful for transporting weapons and can run errands like reconnaissance, delivering medical supplies to wounded soldiers, and navigation through rubble and debris. When on the front line, it is tasked with patrolling and target recognition. Now, there are questions about the originality of the robot dog since it resembles the cart titan from the popular anime Attack on Titan. Okay, that part's a joke. But the U.S. government has claimed that the Russian robot dog is a knockoff of a Chinese robot, the Unitree A1. This suspicion has been fueled by the similarities and capabilities and build, as well as the fabric that has been used to hide its true origins. The next generation of autonomous weapons in Russia is the Avatar robot that the country has given herself the task of creating in the next 10 years. This robot is reportedly being designed to replace soldiers on the battlefield field in times to come. This avatar will reportedly be designed in anthropomorphic or non-anthropomorphic, which means that it could be like a human or Ultron's minions. There have been speculations that it would be able to perform functional capabilities that are similar to humans. That includes interaction, conversation, and the ability to provide first aid or even drive a car conveniently. Russia has tried their hands at this before because in 2015, there was first development of a humanoid robot which could shoot and drive vehicles. 
vehicles. It had a manipulator arm, which could be controlled by a remote operator for firing. An image of robot soldiers is crazy enough, but it means that you're imagining a world without human soldiers. But to be frank, countries like the USA and China would probably be the first to implement this advancement globally. The competition is always strong between these ones. Hey, you can enter a competition as well, you know. You can win the title of the fastest subscriber if you can click the button before we finish the term artificial intelligence. Did you do it? Hey, congratulations! Now, Russia still has the possibility of winning like you since they have the Uran 9, which is an unmanned ground based drone. It is considered one of the most powerful combat drones in the world. It reportedly holds the top position in the world when it comes to firepower. It is apparently like the Terminator of the drone world unstoppable and deadly. The Uran 9 measures 4.5 meters in length and 2 meters in width. It also weighs close to 10 tons and is equipped with a 30mm automatic Cannon 2 a 72 and a 7.62mm machine gun. And that's not all, because it also has launchers with 9 M120 Ataka anti-tank missiles fitted onto the sides. And that's not all, because these launchers can be replaced by EGA aircraft missiles to provide air density. It also has 6 reactive flamethrowers which are positioned at the rear. Now that is a war machine. The Uran 9 is the leading unmanned combat drone in the world right now, with unmatched firepower when it comes to executing combat operations. It reportedly demonstrated its skills in Syria, but exactly what it did to help the Syrian conflict is unclear. This machine is not without its quirks either. While the US, UK, and France, among others, are still developing unmanned combat weapons to minimize human casualties, Russia has closed the gap single-handedly by the development of Uran-9. Cernic is the armored track vehicle which is designed for various tasks. It is tasked with reconnaissance, patrolling, demining, and territorial guarding. You can call it the Swiss Army Knife of robots with three control modes to boot. It can hit 40 kilometers per hour. It can do everything from providing fire support to evacuating wounded soldiers. It is also capable of withstanding firepower up to 7.62 millimeter caliber. Seriously, these things are very tough. It also has different combat modules that can be interchanged, ranging from machine guns to anti-tank missiles. Mixing and matching, but more violently because it's also possible to swap the weapons for a high-speed 30mm cannon and anti-aircraft missiles too. And if that's not impressive, maybe the next one will make you quake. The Nerecta and Marker is another new introduction to Russia's robot army. They are designed for carrying out tasks on the battlefield without endangering the lives of human soldiers on their side. This combat robot is used in groups which operate and are controlled under a single system which can be remotely operated by an expert. It can also be accompanied by the operator on the front. We already know the preferred option. The Nerecta is a robotic platform that is equipped with combat modules that can function once it is set up. Before it is sent into battle, it is loaded with a map of the area and the grids of landmarks to be destroyed. After this, soldiers can simply select a task and the robot would execute it immediately. Its tasks range from supplying ammunition to helping with firepower against enemy lines. The marker, which is the other part of the pair, is a small tracker platform that is capable of traveling up to 1,000 kilometers while carrying heavy load and evacuating the wounded. It is suitable for military and urban living such that you can randomly find a marker on the streets of Russia. It can also operate autonomously and reportedly has an autonomous time of 50 hours. Humans are capable of building really scary things. It can do all of this with just 30 liters of fuel. Russia now has even more capability to cause worse damage like we've never seen without putting their soldiers at risk of injury or life loss. This new development means that Western military powers are undoubtedly uneasy when observing Russia's improvement. This is because there has been a huge shift in the balance of military strength and power between them all. Let's hope there would be no wars for us to test this theory out. Now you might be thinking of a future where robots are actually at the top and we are at the mercy of a robot overlord, but this advancement is not without implications. On one hand, having robots do the work of war would be saving human lives, well, on the side that have them. If robots lead the front lines, that means less lives lost, and if we look at it well, that's a pretty convincing argument. Minimizing the human cost of conflict is definitely what anyone would want to work with, despite humans being the reason in the first place. On the other hand, however, concern 
concerns that need to be addressed are looming. There's the issue of accountability. When decisions are made by human soldiers on the battlefield, there is a level of moral and ethical responsibility that accompanies their actions. What would happen if a robot who has no conception of morality pulls the trigger? Who would take the blame if the robots make the wrong move? If one side starts deploying robot armies in war, there is nothing stopping the other side from doing the same. We would be having robots fighting robots, and the consequences would mean a lot of damage financially, economically, and socially. There would be a never-ending cycle of robot warfare, especially since there could be bigger and better robots made. There could also be a problem where these robots fall into the wrong hands. If terrorist groups and rogue states acquire them, we might have an even bigger problem. So, how do we navigate this new world. Serious conversations will need to happen, considering regulations about how, where, and when these robots can be used. It is no surprise that Russia established this robot army because, let's face it, Russia is not loved, and her president even less. Which is why we have a video on how Vladimir Putin avoided death 43 times in a row. Check it out and enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.